Hey guys, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World here on YouTube. My name is Daniel Rosso. This is my tech YouTube channel. So recently, uh, one of the content ideas or little kind of forays I went on last week while I was archiving my data was to do with Worm Media. Um, and Worm Media is, uh, as those who've clicked in probably know already, write once, read many times. And uh, I've done a lot of videos about writing onto the MDisk or using the MDisk and archival media for backup and archives. Um, and most uh, of the uh, optical media is Worm or most forms of optical media is Worm, which means that you can write it once, uh, but you can read it as many times as uh, the thing will hold up. Um, not, I'm not sure if it's fair to say most optical media because there is uh, RW products for, I think uh, I think all of them. Uh, but certainly it's very commonplace, uh, especially when you're into archival grade storage, which is what I'm mostly looking at, because uh, generally to when permanence and longevity of the physical media is the concern, you want low write speeds and you don't want to let it's it's more stable if the layer is only writable once. So very well known forms of worm media would be optical storage. You know, we've talked about the M-Disc, the Blu-rays, the CDs, what have you. Uh, but what I find interesting and why I thought I'd put together this quick little slideshow is that there's actually worm, there's other obscure forms of worm media out there and uh, it's been actually built into the cloud as well. So I always thought the worm was kind of a nuisance. I mean, ideally, right, if we could have something like an M-Disc that was totally archival, but you could go in and add or delete files. I mean, that would be handy, right? In an ideal universe. Uh, so I always thought of Worms as, as kind of a bit annoying. Uh, you have to make sure you get all your stuff right. And uh, once it's written, if you forget one file, uh, there's nothing to do except put that onto the next disk you burn. But it can actually be a feature, which I uh, thought was interesting. And when I got thinking about it, it made a bit of sense. So Worm, when you can only write the thing once, you're, you create an immutable file system. It can't be changed uh, whatever you do, you can plug it in to a computer, you can read it, you can look at it, you can turn it upside down, but you can't change what's on the disk. Think of an M disk, for example. And when I th think about situations where that might actually be not a drawback, but actually a feature, uh, there are scenarios. And uh, when I went down my little Google trajectory, I found a few that were quite interesting, actually. Well, I thought so. So it, w one way to prevent accidental deletion, which we've talked about in why I think backing up the cloud's a good idea, is, uh, well, that's one way to protect against it, right? If you can't modify the file system, you can't, the only way to delete the contents of, let's say, that worm media disk is if you actually take out a jackhammer and, uh, you know, uh, destroy it uh, physically, right? Or put it through a shredder, a shredder what, whatever. Uh, so it's actually one way of preventing accidental deletion if you're handing important material over to um, someone and you don't necessarily want to take the risk that they'll accidentally wipe it. Uh, you could use Worm Media for that. Think about stuff like patient health records, where for compliance reasons, a health practice might have to keep a physical copy or just an, just a copy of a of EMRs, you know, electronic medical records, but they have to be kind of verified at a point in time. You can't have someone uh, changing numbers or that risk. So that would also be good for worm, right? So when you get to thinking about it, you you, you kind of think, oh, there's actually reasons why this could be useful. Um, company IP, trade secrets, other stuff like that, that you might give, you might give that to someone under very, very tight control. Um, and one of the security features might be that they, it's, it's on Worm Media, so they can't do, change it whatsoever. Um, other times that Worm might come in handy. So yeah, it's, a, it's kind of like a crude way of locking an active file system. I'm, I'm thinking there might be some like crazy version control workflows whereby, you know, collaborative development, but stuff gets, fixed version gets put onto Worm. Although these days it's, it's you know, all that stuff would probably be uh, better handled through just security features. But technically there is in a, kind of an old school case to be made that Worm could be uh, a good way of periodically versioning uh, something like a collaborative development project. Um, audibility and compliance, I mentioned in the, in the case of healthcare, uh, also, like financial records, I know that uh, the M-Disc and optical media remains useful for this reason, um, because you fix what you create at a point in time and you prevent tampering. 
So for stuff like financial records that you don't want, there might be an interest on the authoring body to change stuff uh, where it might be good. Also, uh, cold storage. I thought it said cloud storage. And I was like, no, it would definitely, definitely not be useful for cloud storage to back up that as storage. But so optical media, the, the classic worm, the first and classic worm format, um, you know, you could have a really crazy system that is air gapped and the um, stuff you're, uh, the, the actual storage is also kind of air gapped by putting, by being on a shelf and not being connected to a computer. Um, I, al- I always find it interesting that there's been some high profile uh, sort of findings by intelligence services over the year and they've recovered stuff on CDs. And I always wonder, was that the reason? It quite well could be. Uh, finally, we have ransomware protection and cybersecurity. So yeah, this is actually kind of like, it's weird because it seems like such an old school thing to have worm media, but then you're like, then you're like, oh yeah, I guess actually that would prevent it from being subject to ransomware attacks. Um, I would add here into this um, that it, you, I don't think any viruses could affect the file system that is totally unwritable. But if people know of some crazy back uh, backdoor that could be exploited, not for malicious purposes, but let me know if, if that's uh, if that's fair to say that really for security's benefit. So uh, what I find interesting was 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 beyond the use cases was the uh, world of worm beyond optical. So uh, worm is you know optical. It's kind of the norm we expect are these days uh, most of the stuff we write if, for those few people who still use it. It's kind of expected that it's worm and sometimes it is rewritable, but the norm is kind of worm. Um, and you can also create it on the software level uh, using virtualization. So stuff like a worm file system could be created on a virtual machine, um, but the underlying file system might be not actually worm. And in the cloud, as we'll see at the tail end here. So just some of the kind of like wacky products I found out there just by Googling worm, write once, read many optical... Oh, sorry, just not optical media, just Googling Worm. So there's this like project by Collabware. They do an archival service. It's a data protection application. You put your stuff into a data lake um, and uh, it can be fortified using Worm. So this is something that kind of companies, and you can see at, see the last line here, all these like standards. I don't know what any of them mean, to be honest. Uh, well, I recognize the FDA. I recognize HIPAA as well for healthcare records, but the rest I don't. Uh, They're probably like financial standards. I forget what SOX is. The SEC is certainly financial. So again, you see here cases where uh, Worm's actually good because it's wanted for compliance with, uh, you know, these exacting data management standards. So Worm is very much uh, relevant and alive and kicking in 2024, even if stuff like optical media is kind of, um, you know, fairly relatively obscure. I even found, I thought this was really interesting because I looked up some Quora threads like, could there be a worm hard drive? And people were like, no, that's not possible because of the way it's made. But then I saw this uh, SSD product, a worm SSD that verbatim came out with in 2022. Um, I don't know if this was, I don't know if this was ever brought to market in um, Europe or the West, let's just say. Because as you can see, the packaging is Chinese and uh, verbatim is now uh, owned and owned by a Taiwanese company. Um, but this wasn't by any means a like old school product, as you can see. Firstly, it only came out two years ago. Secondly, it's got a USB 3.2, um, 128 gigs. And I was I was looking at the products. I'm like, how are they trying to get people interested in this? And they're like, it's used for archival, uh, which is a great worm use case, right? We I forgot to mention archival, maybe because I've been doing it so much lately. Uh, but archival is like kind of the chief the, the chief of the worms. Uh, when you want to archive stuff, you want to really have it, you know, um, ideally, if you're doing like strict cataloging, that's when it's an advantage. But as I said, there's other times where it would be handy not to, not to be worm. So yeah, Verbatim did this thing in 2022 anyway, and it's called the WOV series. And I'm not 100% sure this was brought to market. You know, when you read press releases and then you can't find it online and you never know, did it actually really happen? But I think it did. I have no reason to believe it didn't. Um, would I buy one? Not really. With my optical media, I can't think of an independent use case for this. I mean, like there's more storage, but worm doesn't necessarily mean data permanence and longevity. And I don't think the fact that it's worm would change that 
it's still an SSD and I wouldn't use that personally for archival. Um, I found there were a couple of worm products in the world of tape, which I thought was very interesting. Uh, this one is called HPA. It's an LTO9 uh, compatible cartridge for 45 terabytes. Um, and it's worm. And again, what, so what, what's the use case here? Or how do they sell it? Because I would think of LTO as no one wants worm on LTO, right? It's for archiving. You want the thing to be, you want to get as much out of your tape as you can. But um, there is actually uh, worm LTOs out there, worm LTO cartridges. And they, HP, sell this by saying that HPE LTO uh, Ultrium cartridges provide reliable low-cost protection to guard your data against the threat of cyber attacks and ransomware, as well as meeting your demands for liability when storing data. They enable businesses to comply with the recommendations of law enforcement, etc. So, interesting that we're taking like this old, relatively old school tech called Worm that was kind of a, f- a quirky feature of optical drives. And now we're like, oh, we could actually use this as a form of ransomware protection. I think that's quite interesting. Um, okay, so just a couple more gems I found like that I had no idea stuff like this existed until yesterday. And that's why I'm making these weird videos because I think <laughs> I reckon I can't be the only one delighting in the, the discovery of these weird, weird and wacky um, tech products, storage products. So there's actually also like a worm um, SD and micro SD. Who would have thought you'd possibly want write only once, write only SD cards, uh, but they actually do exist. Um, there's this company called Flexon that makes these things. Um, and yeah, I mean, you could, uh, I'm trying to think of a use case, but they talk again here about data manipulation. Um, to me, this one is a bit hard to wrap my head around because I think of SD cards as commonly used for like content creators, like photographers and videographers, but, um, oh, I forgot to look for USB stick. What a bummer. A flash, a pen drive. I'd imagine, I'd, I'd imagine they exist after seeing all these strange strange products here uh so there is uh maybe maybe i'll search for them quickly before i end this video so there's uh, also uh there are actually worm hard drives don't ask me how they work i have no idea but they do exist i found this thing called rdx worm media by this company called rdx lock they're again pitching at the ransomware and archival and regulatory use cases and they're really really not cheap look at the prices one terabyte for 600 bucks and the four terabyte thing is costing 1k um now moving into cloud storage so again you can virtualize worm so aws have this feature called s3 object lock um which basically allows you to store objects using a worm model so you can use and again all the same um all the same compliance stuff about financial and healthcare and so this is actually kind of like i guess the more modern approach to worm you can still if you want buy these interesting products and you could of course use them in conjunction right you might for compliance have to do off-site backup and on-site or off-site and on-site archival and you could do your off-site to uh, s3 object lock bucket and s3 object lock bucket and your on-site to something like this uh, rdx worm media i knew there was going to be a usb drive if i search for it so i just quickly uh, added this to the video uh yeah this is also from flexon so i guess there's just like these are such niche use cases and it looks like they're like kind of the worm people or they uh, really specialize in these modified forms of physical storage. Uh, so yeah, they have a efficient worm USB memory storage, uh, you store the data once and make it unalterable using a USB drive and it's available in eight gigs to 32 gigs capacity. So it's not huge, uh, but again, you can totally actually, you don't have to stretch your mind too far to see why this could be useful um, if you were giving someone a USB drive with very sensitive information on it, you could give it to them, take it back and know that they haven't corrupted it or changed the files in any way. Uh, I can definitely think of some shady, shady stuff that could be facilitated using this technology. Maybe this, uh, clean cut looking guy is actually up to something shady. Um, so yeah, all basically... All, all the same uh, use cases being advertised. So that was that's the wacky world of Worm. Uh, maybe that's a good title for this video. Uh, worm storage beyond optical. It's a bit less glamorous. Hope this was interesting. If you want to get more random videos about random tech and random stuff, subscribe here to on YouTube. Thanks for watching.